Okay, chat. So, uh, in the past, as I'm sure you guys have seen, I and many other creators have uh, written out really long notepads filled with a ton of different changes that we want to see. Show Croc? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll show Croc. I'll show Croc. Here you go. We've written out a ton of changes that we want to see in upcoming patches. Now, this time around, I don't necessarily know when the next patch is. I don't know if it's this week or next week or even if we're getting one before the seasonals, which is kind of a bummer. I would like to know. Um, but this time around, instead of just writing up a big, long list, uh, there was a post made on Reddit by an LOR designer talking about the types of feedback that they would like to see. Uh, so let's go ahead and read through that real quick. We're going to at least skim it because I thought it was an interesting read. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is from Dan Felder. How I, an LOR designer, this should be Anne, I think. Because because when you say L, L like has like a vowel sound at the beginning of it, so I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Anne. That's okay. As an LOR designer, writes game feedback. Uh, several players have asked me how to write feedback in a way it's maximally useful for devs. I post a few comments about this. Blah, blah, blah. The core advice I would give is describe your experience the way you might explain how you're feeling to a doctor. Right? Am I a real Redditor? I have way too much karma. Um, he's a Redditor chat? Oh, no. Wait, you guys found me out. Um, but, yeah. Describe your experience the way you would explain how you're feeling to a doctor. Um, so, uh, to go on. Basically, you should describe how you're feeling and what your symptoms are to the doctor. And then the doctor, who's the professional on it will then be able to diagnose it and sort of fix the issue, right? Ideally. Show history. I uh, don't have much of a history on the account, to be honest. Um, Yeah. Anyway, chat, I'm trying to talk about the Reddit post, not Reddit in general. Come on. Come on. But yeah. Uh, so, for instance, if you're talking to your doctor, you would say, please, you would not say, please schedule me for an MRI on my left leg and prescribe me X medication for 14 days. Even if the patient is 100% right about what should be done, the doc can't know that until they've learned what the patient's symptoms are. Uh, so, for instance, an example uh, of one of their friends working on MMO got a bunch of player feedback during an early beta that the distance between zone A and zone B is way too far. The lead producer collecting that feedback told the team that they should reduce the distance between zone A and zone B accordingly, right? So this is when uh, players come forward and say, hey, this is the change that we need to see. And the lead producer is like, okay, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Um, but ripping out a chunk of the map would have been a huge amount of work and would have frankly been wasted because the designer said uh, the players are probably calling for a shorter distance because they're bored. Looking at the area, they're probably bored because there's a lot of monsters and hidden treasure there, but there's no quest to encourage players to look for the treasure or kill the monsters. The players complaining about this are very quest focused, so they're running through the area after getting the quest to go from zone A to zone B. You're ignoring anything that isn't part of the quest until it's done. We originally thought players would explore the area if their quests encouraged them to go through it, but these quest focused players aren't doing that, so let's put a few quests in there. I'll take It'll take one designer just a few days. Right, uh, and it ended up being correct because they were able to uh, better identify um, what the player um, means and what they actually need to happen instead of just taking the player's, uh, you know, a word for it. Right? Um, there's a very famous quote that uh, players are very good at identifying issues, but are absolutely terrible at fixing them. So, here's what I want to talk about, chat. I want to talk about the current state of uh, Legend of Rune Terra. And the types of, uh, I would normally say changes I would like to see, but instead let's talk about what we feel like isn't working. That way we can try and, um, you know, help the designers out to uh, be on the same page as us. How's that sound, Chad? Nice post. I genuinely do think it's a nice post. I, I think that there are probably... I, I personally feel like a lot of times when I write up a list of like changes I would like to see, I can do a pretty good job like explaining, you know, my whole th thought process along the way. And I don't think that I'd necessarily just throw out like change numbers to change numbers or, you know, you know, very, I, I think I generally have a good approach, but I understand that they can receive a lot of feedback and even my feedback, they might look at it like, oh, this guy's fucking crazy. I don't understand. So yeah. Thought the quote was players were the issue. Players <laughs> always are, right? <laughs> Kaisa wins the game too early. So let's talk about Kaisa.
because Kaisa is a hot button issue. Kaisa represents or has represented like 17% of play, um, her Kaisa Demacia deck. And when we play against Kaisa, I, I think that there are a couple really big um, issue points, right? <laughs> Feedback, Ravine, Ravine, Ravine. Bro, if they just fixed Ravine already, then it wouldn't be an issue. I wouldn't have to give that feedback. Uh, so I think that the big thing about playing against Kaisa, the big frustration point, is that when you play against her, you don't feel like you have a ton of agency, right? And that would be because Kaisa usually is very hard to interact with. She comes down on turn 5, usually flipped because Evolve flips very quickly right now. Uh, we're going to ignore the Sharp Sight bug because everyone knows that the Sharp Sight bug exists and that it shouldn't exist. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but when Kaisa comes down... Um, you kind of have to answer her immediately. And the ways to answer a six health unit aren't that easy, right? You have like a real kill spell like Vengeance. You have, you know, like Disintegrate and you have to stack a couple spells. Um, Cause if you don't answer her immediately, then Supercharge existing in this game is a three mana focus speed grant spell shield card. Uh, absolutely just blows you out if you just pause for even a second. So Kaisa comes down and immediately forces a response. The issue is, that, that wouldn't necessarily be that big of an issue. Because there's a lot of champions that force a response instantly. There's a lot of cards in this game that require basically an instant response. Um, the issue with Kaisa is that she exists in Shurima. And Shurima is just better than any other region at punishing you for trying to interact with them. Especially at punishing you if you have a very specific window in which you need to interact with them. The existence of Hourglass and Right of uh, Negation just makes it incredibly difficult to actually kill Kaisa. If you throw everything on the stack because you have to kill her instantly, then you just get absolutely blown out. And that feels incredibly bad. It feels like you're getting put into a position where there is no correct answer. Because um, if you let her sit for a second, then she's going to get Barrier. She's going to get, or not Barrier, she's going to get uh, our, our Spell Shield. She's going to get Overwhelm, and she's just going to beat your ass. Um... Or, you know, if you uh, don't sit there, then you throw everything at her, then they just hourglass or deny, and you, know, you traded your six mana spell or multiple cards for two mana or for four mana. And I think this is kind of a, a systemic issue with uh, Shurima, is it feels like they have all of these really high durability, high impact champions. It's going to be like Azir, Talia, Ziggs, um, you know, even Zareth is pretty hard to deal with. Uh, all of these champions that sort of require responses... Uh, but because of the way that the region is built, it very much uh, punishes you for trying to actually respond to their must-kill units. So that that would be my that would be my uh, description of why I feel like Kais is an issue. Um, it's just kind of the existence of uh, Supercharge putting us where there are no correct answers to actually dealing with her. She just applies too much pressure, and it feels like I don't have choices. I don't have options. Um, when I face against her, right? Like, there's no agency on my side. And it doesn't feel like they're making any particularly impressive plays, right? Um, you know, they could just, like, keep running shit out. And it's like, I'm the one who has to deal with it, because otherwise I die instantly. Your street saying thanks for the follow. So, that would, that would be my thing, is that low, low agency, because she is a must-answer unit uh, in a region that punishes you for trying to answer her uh so if i were to come up with like a prescription right so if we were to uh talk about like the changes that i would like to see um i think that either kaisa needs to be a lower power level so she's not a must answer on site so this would be like lower stats or it takes longer to evolve or um she just isn't killing you you know maybe she can't copy scout i think that would be like a weird change i don't, wouldn't like that um also by the way punishes you for trying to answer her uh hourglass deny also they can just play second skin for some reason second skin uh grants everywhere that's another reason that it just feels terrible to try and actually interact with her because even if you do end up killing her some way some form the next kaisa is not going to be as easy to kill she's going to have barriers she's going to have spell show she's going to have scout you just cry right you actually just cry if second skin wasn't free that's an option I, I think either she needs to be uh less must answer on site so she's less likely to kill you within like two turns or win the game within like two turns 
um, or they need to have fewer uh, protection spells, or I need to have some sort of an avenue to actually deal with her, right? Like, either uh, Hourglass and Deny, these are the cards that I think that are, like, really the issues. I think that these should probably be gutted in Shurima because they continually come back as issues in these decks. Um, I would like to see that. That way we actually have windows in which we can actually interact with their units. Um, other option, you know, she just uh, is less strong. Um, or, I mean, my least favorite change would be, like, just changing second skin um, and be like, oh, well, you can only play it while she's on board. Like, that's cool and all. But, I mean, you're still getting blown out most of the time. So, yeah. Seven keywords for Evolve. Um, I don't know if seven keywords is enough, to be honest. The way that they built the deck, like, you evolve on, like, turn three most games. Kaisa's under-costed? Maybe. Leave your hourglass alone. Yeah, so, I mean, if you disagree with, like, any of my leading up, that's totally awesome. Um, but, like, my prescription is Kaisa... Needs to be less must answer on site, or we need better ways to deal with her without getting hard punished. Uh, yeah, that, that's my feelings on Kaisa. Uh, let's talk about Bard. So, my description of Bard and why Bard is an issue right now is because, again, it comes back to low agency when you play against Bard. Uh, the impact of Chimes uh, feels like it just sort of drastically uh, shifts um, the way that a game would normally play out. Something like playing Voice or Vo Sea of the Voice, Voice of the Sea, the 3-3, uh, three, three, um, the Alawi 3-3, three, three, that coming down as a 4-4 four, four, or a 5-5 five, five just drastically shifts the way that the game can actually be played um, and it feels like no player had any actual agency in whether that card is a 3-3 or a 5-5. Five, five. Um, so it, it feels really bad to play against and to play as, because if you're the bard player and you just don't draw any natural chimes, then you actually just, you know, your cards aren't doing anything special and, you know, it's very unimpressive. And if you're, you know, playing against bard and they drop 5-5 five, five Voice of the Sea on turn 3 or like this, you know, fucking 4-9... Alawi, which is something that we saw the other day, 4-9 Alawi on curve, you just kind of sit there, it's like, oh, well, I just, I didn't have the opportunity to win this game. Uh, I think that Bard, throughout his entire existence, has really led to a lot of non-games in that way, or at least games that sort of don't feel as good to play for either player. There's just a lack of agency uh, in this game, right? And, like, I, I enjoy agency. I enjoy feeling like my decisions affect the outcome of the game. And Bard feels like, you know, it takes away player agency and it just puts it into RNG a lot of time. That isn't necessarily the case. You don't, like, automatically win the game from, like, one cool Bard chime. Sometimes you do, but usually it isn't one thing. Usually it's, like, a build-up over time. But, yeah. Uh, so, low agency because of early chimes warping the game uh, feels like neither player... Uh, Impact. Neither player contributes to how strong chimes actually feel. So my prescription for this uh, would be that Bard doesn't shuffle for the first three turns. <laughs> Bard doesn't shuffle for the first three turns. Because it's the early chimes that really impact you. Because uh, any chime that hits for in the first like three turns... Um, that's when you are limited in your mana, you're limited in actually being able to respond to it. I think that's like a huge issue. Um, either they don't shuffle in the first three turns, um, or they don't give health. Um, and like, that's probably a bad change. I think removing the health from it is like a, a, a fix that would probably mean that Bard wouldn't be in these tier one decks anymore, but it's probably not great for Bard. You know, I, I, the hope would be that at the end of the day that there's a reason to play Bard. And I think that the reason to play Bard should be the, the long-term value of consistently getting bigger stats in your opponent. Um, and, you know, if we're getting bigger stats on, like, turn 6, turn 7, turn 8, I'm fine with that. I think that's totally fine. Um, it's those early chimes that really just warp the game, right? So level 1 just buffs attack, and level 2 buffs both? Maybe. And I think just changing chimes to round start would be enough? No, it only, it only slows it down one round. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough. <clears throat> but yeah um uh so my prescription would be 
Uh, bard doesn't shuffle natural chimes until turn start of turn four. Um, or chime power level is lowered. I would prefer not to do this. Yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Do we think that Azira Rally is an issue? Azira Rally is annoying, but I don't know if it's like that much of an issue, chat. Do you guys feel like Azira Rally is an issue? Talk about Evelyn. I don't know how to fix Evelyn. Round end buff instead of on summon. Oh, you want them to come down unbuffed and then get buffed at the end of the turn? Oh, that sounds rough. He doesn't have a finisher. Yeah, I don't. I don't really think a zero really is an issue. Um, Katarina Yasuo. God, I hate Katarina. But Katarina is like probably not that much of an issue. I want to talk about thralls. I want to talk about thralls slash failure uh, combo. And this might be the one where people just like disagree with me, a hundred percent, and that's totally fine. You guys are allowed to disagree with me, um, but here is my description of uh, why I feel like Thralls and these Freljord combo decks like FTR are an issue. Um, and we talked about this before. We made a YouTube video on it before. You could check out, I'll link it somewhere. Uh, it's the Thrall, uh, uh, how to fix combo in Legend Rune Terra. But the basic premise is that I think that uh, decks like Thralls um, and decks like FTR are incredibly consistent and incredibly lethal at very early turns in the game. So Thralls is oftentimes popping multiple Thralls on like turn 5, turn 6. Uh, FTR is oftentimes casting FTR on like turn 7 um, or playing like turn 6 it that stares. Uh, and just like absolutely blowing your opponent out. Stuff like Buried Nice is also an issue that just makes like playing mid-range into them incredibly difficult. Um which wouldn't normally be that big of an issue. I think that that is usually fine. Um, I think that having an incredibly lethal combo isn't necessarily bad for the game, but I think that if you have an incredibly lethal, consistent combo, then you need to be able to be interacted with elsewhere. And it feels like right now, it's very difficult to actually interact with these combos. You can't stop them from going off and you can't really kill your opponent before they get the chance to actually play it out. Um, and I think that a lot of that I think that the crux of that is on Ravine. I think that Blighted Ravine is just too strong of a card because it clears out the board, it heals you, and it makes your opponent take a turn off. Um, and when you're getting all of that value for four mana uh, on one turn and you're winning the game on like turn six, I think that making your opponent take a turn off is just way too powerful. I think it's way too powerful. I think that all of these things combine together to just create incredibly unfun to play against decks. Um, where again, it feels like you just don't have a whole lot of agency. It doesn't feel like you have a whole lot of answers to actually uh, deal with them. You don't think turn six is a bad design? Gonna open attack, it's from this play. Turn six, it that stares? I mean, but what if... <laughs> so what if turn six is their, uh, is their token then, right? But yeah, um, so that that's that's my feelings towards it is that I feel like for how strong and potent, uh, inconsistent and uninteractable their combo is, they have too much protection to get that that point of the game. If countdown happened at round end, um, I mean that would change the game vastly. I don't know. Uh, so yeah. Um, because of the potency, potency, uh, consistency, and uh, uninteractability of Freljord combo decks, it feels like the uh, games against them are very low uh, agency. Especially with Turn five, six thralls, turn six, seven, it the stairs, or she who wanders, or FTR. So, my prescription ravine 
does too much in a game where you are winning on turn six. Heal plus kill opponent's board plus take a turn off plus L plus ratio is just too strong. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we really want to talk about here? Because I think that these are like, we could talk about like Winning Light. I haven't seen like anybody play Winning Light since the, uh, since the patch. Talk about Papercraft Dragon. You hate the card. It's broken. My attach units. Okay. Maybe we talk about attach. I'm down to talk about attach. I'm down to talk about attach. Let's do it. Papercraft and Spell Shield. I don't think Spell Shield's an issue. I think that the issue is Spell Shield combined with Must Answer units combined with Hourglass and Deny. And I think that like Kaisa, um, I think that like that's all in this argument up here. I think Wing Light's just roughing a Kaisa. Maybe. Um, yeah. So attach. Uh, I would say that the big feels bad of attach is that. Uh, it feels very uninteractable in that you can't really uh, deal with attach units um, like at all. If your opponent had draws a papercraft dragon, it's going to come down turn after turn after turn. Um, you can't hush off the double attack. You can't quick sand off the double attack. Um, you just kind of get your ass beat. Um, which wouldn't necessarily be that much of an issue, except that oftentimes these decks are played, uh, like like the good papercraft decks um, are either getting paired with stuff like Fizz that inherently is like, hey, you're not allowed to interact with me at all, so you can't like stun it, you can't kill it, um, or they're being paired with Shirima. And Shirima, again, has Hourglass and has Deny uh, and has spell shielded units like Ruin Runner that just inherently punish you for trying to interact with them, right? And I think that it's just sort of uh, an amalgamation of all these things coming together, uh, making it feel like you don't have a whole lot of impact on the outcome of the game. You know, they just kind of, you can just like deny check them on like turn six and be like, oh, I sure hope they don't kill me. Hourglass is very bad with attached though. True. But I, I was just tying it back into like the bigger Shirima issue, right? I was tying it back into the bigger Shirima issue, but I do understand that what you're talking about. A, a lot of the attached decks don't run Hourglass. Or if they do, then, you know, they're not hourglassing their, uh, their, uh, their double attack guys, right? Like, they're hourglassing on, like, a defensive turn to hold on to their overwhelm units. <coughs> mm. But, yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. I was tying it back into the bigger Shreem issue. And to talk about why I'm okay with Azir Aurelia, um, we can talk about it in a second, Kyogre. But, yeah. I, I think that it just feels like you can't really interact with the keywords um they continually come back over and over and over so even if you can kill the units um you aren't really doing a whole lot to set them behind um i, I think that like if you kill like a papercraft unit it's better because five unit mana is a lot of unit mana um but it does kind of feel bad that they keep getting refreshed um i'm less worried about that i think that the big issue is that you can't hush or quicksand off the uh keywords um, and again, they're getting thrown onto these units that have spell shield or have, uh, you know, um, stuff like fizz where you can't really interact with them. Uh, and it just feels bad to play against like nothing else mattered up to that point in the game. Right. Uh, so I think not being able to interact with the attached keywords leads to what it feels like low agency games against these decks uh papercraft gets slapped onto fizz or uh ruin runner and there aren't a whole lot of ways to deal with it especially since shrima has the nigh um yeah. Prescription. Hush and quicksand should remove attach keywords. Or the turn. Make vengeance go through spell shield and be four mana. That sounds terrible. 
But yeah. Um. In magic, they're perfectly fine. What? What are? Uncounterable removals? That sounds so cringe. I, I don't want to play magic. Um, I know that something people talk about a lot is that there's no, like, real control in LOR, right? They're like, oh my god. Um, if I want to win a game of Legend and Terra, I can't just, like, exhaust my opponent and just, like, one for one everything. And, you know, they play out a unit and I kill it. And they play out a unit and I kill it. And they play a spell and I counter it. And so on and so forth, right? And I, I people oftentimes talk about removal being bad in Legend and Terra because of that. Um, you know, like, Vengeance is a six-mana card when in Magic it's a two-mana card or whatever. Um, and I, I think that being able to just, like, straight up one-for-one one trade or kill every single unit is probably bad for the game. That sounds like it would be incredibly boring and incredibly unfun to play, at least for me personally. That doesn't sound like a type of game that I would enjoy playing. Um, I think that, like, removal as a means to an end to either, like, slow down your opponent or gain tempo or just buy you time so that you can, you know, get your... Uh, you know, your NAMI turn or your FTR turn or whatever. I think that, like, removal as a means to an end should be uh, the way that removal is sort of uh, balanced in this game. I don't think that it should just be, you know, I should be able to remove every single thing that my opponent ever plays out and they shouldn't be able to do anything, you know? But yeah. One of Riot's issues is they print these really powerful cards with printing at least one direct counter. Without printing? Do you mean without? I printing counters isn't necessarily like a great way to do it right like i don't think that this deck i don't think that this game would be better if they printed more passage unearned type of cards um i think that that would be really bad for the game and feel even worse perfect average for a follow you guys right geki true 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 and it actually costs zero mana hello <laughs> but yeah 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 um, so yeah, I, I don't necessarily think that removal necessarily uh, is too bad in this game. Um, uh, you, we want to talk about Aziri Relia. I don't think Aziri Relia is really an issue because I think that if at any point we wanted to beat Aziri Relia, we could beat Aziri Relia, right? Like we can just start playing like Tribeam. Like Tribeam fucking destroys Aziri Relia. We can play like Low to the Ground Demacia that just like with Challenger units absolutely destroys Aziri Relia. Um, I, I think that if at any point that you want to start beating it, you can absolutely beat the deck. Um, I think that getting, you know, a, a, a six copies of Azir is, like, probably not great. I'd probably prefer that they didn't get Domination. Um, but I, at any point, we can beat this deck. Uh, the issue is that a lot of the decks that beat this deck are really bad into stuff like Kaisa and stuff like Bard. So you don't see them as much in the meta right now. Um, so it, it is kind of like Kaisa and Bard putting so much pressure onto the meta that we aren't able to play uh, stuff that beats Azir Irelia. And I don't think that's necessarily Azir Irelia's fault, right? Looked up Raigeki and it seems bonkers. There's no way that card isn't banned everywhere. I think it was banned when the game first came out, but like I'm pretty sure it's been at least at one for like five or six years. But yeah. Azir Irelia's weak? I don't necessarily think that's true either. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about Evelyn? Evelyn, from a design perspective, I worry about. I think that Evelyn is very similar to Yasuo or Katarina, where any time that they're going to end up being viable, I think it's going to be incredibly bad for the game and re lead to incredibly unfun games. Um, I think that husks in general are not weak. Giving plus one health is one of the easiest ways to absolutely break a unit. Um, so when every single one of your units comes down with plus one health, and a random keyword, I think that it's incredibly unfun to play against, um, and I would never want Evelyn to actually be good, especially because these random keywords, like getting quick attack or getting, you know, like quick attack on like a challenger unit, or getting overwhelm on a big unit, or hitting elusive, or hitting spell shield, even regen, even tough, like there are so many incredibly strong keywords um, that when you randomly generate them, it leads again to what feels like low agency games. Where it's like, oh, I just got high rolled and it doesn't feel like I could have done much this game. Um, now, I don't necessarily think that that's the way that Evelyn plays right now. Because right now, uh, you can just deal with the husk, right? You can, like, kill the first couple husks and then Evelyn's, like, set really far behind. She's not flipped on curve um, and the deck just is a lot slower and doesn't really have, like, ways to end the game, right? 
And that's kind of like Evelyn's issue right now. Um, but I would say that I don't want her to be good at any point in her current state. I think that the way that she is made is currently... Um, I, I think that the way she is made is currently incredibly toxic for the game. And I would not want her to ever actually be in anything resembling a tier 1 deck. Um, similar to Katarina, right? Do I in terms of agency? I think that most of my complaints about this game come back to agency. I personally want as much agency as possible um, and feel like my decisions uh, affect the outcome of the game. I understand that we're playing a card game and at the end of the day there's some amount that's just going to always be out of my control. Um, but I think that like in individual games um, I want as much agency as possible and I would like uh, uh, stuff to be designed with that in mind. Right? Most of the stuff that I hate in this game uh, just comes down to feeling like I don't have agency or I don't have... Uh, you know, way to contribute to the outcome of the game. Okay, but can she have a finisher? I, again, so like if they have, if she has like a really strong, it's so funny. It's so funny that we talk about, can she have a finisher? Because I think that forever, we as a community have talked about like finishers in this game being bad. You know, like every seven mana card in the game, every seven mana unit is literally bad other than like Winding Light. Um, and like most eight mana uh, units are actually just bad because they don't end the game. Um, even nine mana units. Dude, Ladros is literally a bad card. Um, so people complain about these finishers forever. And then Riot listens. And Riot's like, okay, so we want better finishers in this game. We want to feel like when we play big units um, that they actually impact the game and they actually end the game. That's, that's a reasonable thing. I think that's honestly an okay way for the game to go. I think that anytime that you're building a deck, your first question should be, how do I plan on ending the game? How do I plan on winning games? And then work backwards from there. So when we have strong finishers, I think that's good for the game. Um, but when Riot prints strong finishers, like Winding Light, suddenly we all lose our shit. When they print strong finishers, like Void Abomination, we lose our shit. It's just, it's incredibly funny that we keep coming back to stuff like, this deck needs a finisher. And I agree with you. I agree with you that, like, Evelyn, if she wants to be a tier 1 deck, probably needs a finisher. Um, but, A, it's just funny that we continually ask for finishers and then hate the finishers we get. And then, B, I don't think that Evelyn should be playable. You know? And A-bomb, rip Ladros. Yeah, Ladros is really bad. Void A-bomb isn't the biggest deal, though. Um, Void A-bomb's really annoying because even if you have removal for the first Kaiser or the second Kaisa, uh, A-bomb coming down with, like, Scout Elusive barriers spell shield is just like really hard to deal with right you don't think we meant finishing the game on turn six and i agree that winding light probably shouldn't end the game on turn six i agree but i mean even then people bitch about a bomb all the time we don't know what we want true this is why this is why this reddit post came out right is because people are and generally, players are very bad at identifying, like, ways to fix problems instead of just identifying the problems themselves. But, yeah. You miss Grindy LOR a bit? Maybe. Um, so, Evelyn, uh, we'll come back to it, but uh, uh, her play style of adding HP plus random keywords to units feels... Like, it leads to lots of games. Uh, determine lots of low agency games determined by RNG. Plus one HP on everything is incredibly strong. And random keywords can be huge blowouts. As it is, Evelyn isn't that strong. Okay, you can interact with the first couple of husks and she gets slowed down plus no real finishers but i would say i don't want her to ever be playable because like bard she's incredibly toxic targon's full of finishers that's where he is i mean a lot of targon's finishers are bad though right I think the Scourge is kind of a really bad finisher, you know? You strong finishers with counterplay, which is hard. You don't blame Dez, but Riptide Rex is a great 8-mana card. Yeah, Rex is cool. I like Rex. I like Rex. 
or not a unified mind. Why not hear you? Yeah, absolutely. And that that's like the easy thing to be like, well, you know, even when you're reading Twitch chat, I'm actually talking to, you know, like there's 300 people in here and there's like, uh, you know, 30 or 40 people who are actually chatting. Um, so it's very difficult to actually like nail down what one person feels because of course everyone has like different opinions, right? But yeah. <clears throat> no comment on Evelyn having an origin passive. I don't care about that that much. Um, I care about her design. Yeah. Hasn't been the same since Stalking Shadows went to three. Damn. Fair Riptide and A-Bomb. Same mana. One can win the game on its own. I mean, Rex ends games. <laughs> Rex does not suck. Where do we need best of three in sideboarding? Um, I don't think that the game was made with sideboarding in mind. I don't necessarily know if I want like best of three and sideboarding on ladder, um, especially since this is a mobile game and uh, making people commit to like 45 minute games. I don't know if that's like necessarily a good thing. Um, I would like more ways to compete or to play competitively in LOR. So like Gauntlet Mattering would be like really cool. And like Gauntlet Mattering with um, like MMR, I think would be really cool. Um, but yeah, yo, sub sync. I think all the Runeterran champions are misses so far. Um... I kind of do. I think that's, like, kind of out of the scope of, like, what this conversation is. But I, I do feel like the Rune Terran Champions, um... I think that when I thought about what excited me about Rune Terran Champions, it was that they would open up deck building and give you more options and more ways to build decks than what we had had previously before. We'd be able to combine a bunch of different cards from different regions that don't normally get to see play together. And that sort of excited me, and that's what, like uh made me interested in rune terran champions you know it is sort of opening up your deck building options and it feels like two-thirds of the rune terran champions have been the opposite of that they've been closing off your deck building options they aren't even saying um you know that you can only play two regions they're playing you can you're saying you actually can't even play two regions you can only play one and a half regions and this half regions is just all of my support right it's just all of my support it would be kind of like if Aphelios, like, uh, didn't let you play Targon. Aphelios just only let you play uh, his weapon cards, right? So it's, you know, like, Gifts from Beyond and uh, the Fangs and uh, the five mana stun card and the Winding Light. And that's it. And it's like, okay, well, that's, that's your whole region. I think that type of thing, um, when used for balance, like, can be interesting. It's just not what I feel like we were sold with Runeterran Champions and what it excited me about Runeterran Champions. You know, Jin was a hit. Uh, I think that Jin is cool in that, like, he definitely did change the way that, like, we build a deck. I think that his deck's, like, you know, kind of straightforward. And realistically, you don't have a whole lot of options with Jin because if you want to build, like, a mid range or, like, a control style deck, uh, having access to only one region spells definitely is rough. Um, it's definitely hard to build a deck. But I think Jen's in, I think Jen's incredibly strong. And I think that like as a first ring Terran champion, being able to pull together all of these cards, I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's fun. I like Jen, honestly. Terran champ death building some pretty mid. Don't you think we have enough players to make Gauntlet MMR? Um, yeah, I mean I hear you. But yeah. I think the intention is both styles. I agree, hit button. It's probably the intention. But I'm just saying that I don't necessarily uh, get excited or enjoy the style of uh, what Evelyn and Bard have brought. Um, I don't think that they're particularly interesting, deck building wise. But yeah. Jin will never not be aggro. I mean, you maybe can build them outside of aggro. It's just a lot harder. It's really limiting. It's really limiting. Jin's so slow for his deck. Um, he's a faster level up condition. I don't think Jin's bad, guys. Jin ends the fucking game when he flips. You guys know that, right? He decimates and destroys your opponent's entire board. Um, my real take on Jin, I think Jin's incredibly strong. I think people are really fucking bad at playing Jin. Like, really fucking bad at playing Jin. Um, I see so many aggro players that just, like, turn their brain off. And they waste, like, his proc on, like, a defensive turn or something. It's like, oh, well... You know, you're just wasting your shit. And it's like, oh, Jin doesn't do anything. It's like, I disagree. I think Jin's really good. But yeah. I guess I'm sorry, Arthur. Achoo! <laughs> mm. But yeah. 
I think Jin's really strong. <laughs> I think that realistically we might be building him wrong. And I think that there's like a way to build him that's like slightly more mid rangey. Um, if you want to like lean more into Jin. But yeah. I don't know. I like Jin. Bard's deck building is literally just which units profit from stats. Kind of. Kind of. I, I definitely feel that. I think that Bard deck building could be a lot more interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny that with Bard, it feels like you don't want to draw Bard. You play Bard just for his uh, origin. And like if you could run less than three copies of Bard, you absolutely would. <laughs> The only decks that like to draw Bard are, like, the tentacle decks that, like, flip him on, like, turn five, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> it's so silly. Can we play Emperor Jin? Oh, God. Oh, God. But, yeah. I think I think these are, like, my main gripes with the game right now. Um, I think these are, like, the main overviews and then, you know, how I feel about the game and then my prescription. And, like... I didn't entirely uh, adhere to what they had said in here. Um, and that's because, you know, I, I like to share my opinion and I like to feel like um, I was, uh, I don't know, I, I like to talk about what I think we should do to fix things. But I tried to split it up in this way. And I tried to uh, put it in such a way that, you know, it might be more helpful to rioters and to game designers. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about the meta. Let me know what you guys think we need to do to fix it. Um, and yeah, hopefully if there are any rioters who want to talk about this shit, dude, I would love to have a fucking riot game designer on my stream to talk about stuff like this. I think that'd be so much fun. Um, I understand why they might not want to do that, but that'd be like really cool. Um, anyway, yeah, appreciate you being here.